ஆண்களை மூடி ஜெபிக்கலாம் ஆஸ் ஏ கோ டு சண்டே ஸ்கூல் ஹால் இல்லு ஏசப்பா நன்றி ஆண்டவரே சோத்திரமாப்பா இந்த மத்திய வேலைக்கு நன்றி செலுத்துகிற மாண்டவரே எங்களுக்கு கொடுத்து இந்த நேரத்துக்காக நன்றி ஈவன் ஆஸ் வி வெயிட் ஃபார் த வேர்ல்ட் ஐ ப்ரே திஸ் இஸ் அ வேர்ல்ட் தட் வில் சேஞ்ச் எவ்ரி பாடிஸ் டெஸ்டினி லோர் எவ்ரி பாடிஸ் பர்பஸ் இன் தேர் லைஃப் லோர் தே வில் ஹாவ் தி ரெக்கக்னிஷன் and the insight into everything they have to do lord i pray god today glory shall descend lord the king of kings the lord of lords will come and visit us today just like jesus visited mary and martha and changed their life resurrect the lazarus i pray god even today you bring your word that will change our destiny lord change our identity change our goal and purposes i pray god we will run faster to the destiny that you have given to us lord make it clear let the vision become clear to us hallelujah lord show us the distant paths show us our destiny in jesus mighty name we pray let's give the lord a mighty clap hallelujah amen god is a good god today we will read scriptures to see how we can wrestle alone to victory you know sometimes we think you know corporate setting is all we need but most of the time we need the corporate setting we need the corporate prayers we need the prayers of other people but actually victory actually comes when you wrestle with god and wrestle against the principalities and powers when you wrestle alone for example in genesis 32:24 jacob was left alone there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day wrestling is essential to victory at some point in life you will be alone you will have to face certain battles alone yes he had a huge family he had actually 12 children and including dina it will be uh, 13 children and he sent his family away wives in front and he was alone on the other side of the brook and now he is wrestling his own fears that will show up the next day jacob had a fear that his brother will kill him the next day because brother is coming with 400 soldiers Jacob was not a man of war he had children he had cows he had calves and also you know sheep and herds but he was not a man of war but he has to face his own brother with 400 soldiers so in your life in our life it is not that we'll always be accompanied by people you will be alone there will be a time i think that's where the real victory happens when you fight with god alone when you are by yourself and confronting those thoughts that come confronting that sickness that looms around you or the fear of the future the uncertainty of tomorrow financial instabilities or anything that is haunting you those are the things that come when you are alone but that's when the real wrestling should happen and that's where you really win and when you win there when you are alone when you come out the other people are just going to recognize your victory they're going to celebrate or see the manifestation of the battle that you already won when you were alone So I'm going to pray today what are the things we should do when we wrestle alone number 1 do not give up verse 25 says when he saw that he did not prevail against him 
the angel touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Jacob was not willing to give up. He was one adamant and stubborn character. He said, I won't give up. I'm alone. I don't have anybody to fight with me, but I'm going to wrestle. And then he said, you know, I won't let you, verse 26, he said, let, his, the angel said, let me go over the day break it. But he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. So this is where we win. This is where when we wrestle with God, when we are adamant, when we are, when we are persistent and pertinent with God, and then say, God, I need a revelation. I need a solution. I am looking for an answer. I am not going to leave until you show me an answer, until you show me the path, until you give me the confidence that everything will be all right. Do not come out of your private room until you know for sure, you have that confidence that God will take you through the situation. Because God will put, not that God is going to give all the answers, but you'll have the assurance that God will take you through all situations. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, just bless me, O God. He's not asking for hosts of angels to fight Esau tomorrow. He said, God, change my identity. I've been always cheating or, you know, taking what belonged to my brother. And so he said, what is your name? And verse 28, thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but from today I'm going to change the way you look at yourself. You are a prince, you are Israel. For a prince, for you are power with God and with men, and you have prevailed. So identity change happens when we wrestle with God. When we wrestle or talk with God, when we are alone with God, you know, we can receive the identity that God wants us to have. We can say, I'm no longer a, a, a weak person. I'm no longer a person who gives up easily. No matter what happens, I'm going to, you know, stay with God. If you stay with God, you're going to win. Hallelujah. Most of the time we lose because we start doubting God. But if we just say, God, I trust you. It's going to be all right. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to give up or throw tramps. You know, I'm going to be calm, be still and know that you are God. Because of the assurance that God has, has given to you already, God says you will prevail. Your name is Israel. You will be the prince. Do not be afraid of Esau. We'll have a way. You know, God will somehow... Put those 400 soldiers, they'll become helpers. They're not here to conquer Jacob. They'll actually become helpers. So that assurance, when we stay with God, that knowing our identity in God, knowing who we are in Christ, that is the victory. I mean, knowing who we are in Christ. We do not need shortcuts to greatness. All we need is the assurance that God is with us. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one of the things I learned when we are constructing this, you'll always have more demand. But then one day I ask God, God, I don't need all the money. All I need is the money for this work this week. And every week, Lord, let it come. We don't need to see the distant past. As a Cardinal Newman said, one step enough for me. Lead kindly light, O God. He said, as in the middle of the night, as the ship was moving in the waters, you know, it was very dark, and Cardinal Newman is writing, Lord, I don't want to see the seashore. All I need, uh, one step is enough for me. I know you will take me to the shore. And that's how we should proceed in life. Amen. And when you have that assurance, yeah, there are so many problems, but then the peace of God comes and says, don't know, if you trust in me, those problems will dissolve. Those mountain-like, or shaped like mountain, those look like mountains, big and, you know, humongous or even fearful, 
But if you just trust Him, and God makes it so easy, He removes it so fast, sometimes it's not, you don't even see that mountain the next day. But some, when we give to fear, when we give to doubt, and when we look around all the storms that come up around us, and then we forget that Jesus is on the boat, Jesus is still with us, He has not forgotten us, then we, our fear in our mind, our emotions can come up. And then the burden may press upon us. Even you can feel the heaviness on your chest. But that's when you got to say, Lord, I'm going to step back and trust in you. Number two, when you want to wrestle, when you want to wrestle, we should know the cause. Why are we wrestling? For example, in 1 Samuel 17, 25, every wrestling should have a cause. We should know what we are fighting for. King David came from the field. And then he talked to the people there. And the men of Israel said, 1 Samuel 17, 25, they said, have you seen this man, this Goliath? He comes to defy or defame or bring down the God of Israel. He comes up and says, your God is not powerful. You know, he defies the armies. You are the weak army. Your God is weak. Can you just send one person to fight with me? That should be sufficient. If he kills me, then we will serve you. If I kill him, you will serve us. So he treats Israel as if he's a weak clan, weak army. And so David is recruiting all this information or learning all this information. And he also sees what is the benefit. You know, just, this is just his, his own way of motivating himself probably. He said, what shall be given to the man who kills? And then they say, yeah, he'll be given riches, no taxes, even his own daughter. And then his brothers were envious of him. He said, hey, did you give it, leave all the sheep? And then you just came here to see the battlefield. You know, are you just wasting time here? You don't even know how to fight. So his brothers were mocking him. And then 1 Samuel 17, 29, King David said, What have I done? Is there not a cause? For everything we wrestle in life, there has to be a cause. A compelling cause. Cause that is worthwhile to fight for. Amen. So when you have a cause, when you have a goal, when you have a dream, you know, that's when you got to wrestle for it. And God will make a way for the right cause. You know, when he stood there, when he said, I'm going to fight this Goliath, I'm going to take down this Philistine, uncircumcised Philistine, which means that man has no covenant. He's not having any covenant with God, but I have a covenant with God. He said, I am a covenant child. How can this uncovenant or the uncircumcised Philistine come and just speak nonsense about covenant children? So that is an understanding. There is a difference. There's a lot of difference. We are covenant children. We have covenant with God. Abraham had special covenant with God. And there was a sign of even covenant. Circumcision was sign of the covenant. Today we have covenant. It is written in our hearts. Not on tablets. You know, not on physical um, you know, the human flesh, but it is, Jesus said, I will make a covenant in the last days in their heart. I will put my word in their heart and write it on the tablet of their heart. So we are covenant children. If we are covenant children, nobody can take, nobody can come and make us their slaves. They can't take what belongs to us. They can't kill us. They can't enslave us. When you go to work, you should always think, I am a covenant child, but that man is not, is an uncircumcised one. So you cannot, we cannot be afraid of any unbeliever to be, you know, straightforward. Like King David, he said, no matter how powerful they are, they don't have a covenant. No matter how strong they are, or how intelligent they are, 
even if they have well experience, you have an edge to win. Hallelujah. Amen. If you understand the covenant, we understand the covenant. Sickness might come at your door, but if we understand the covenant that God made with us, if you understand that blood covenant, if you understand the atonement, that Jesus really paid the price for sickness also, once we understand that covenant, we can say, sickness, I command you to leave. Hallelujah. Failure, stay away. All these uncircumcised Philistines don't even come to my territory. You, we don't need to be afraid of enemies. For example, once you understand covenant, you can even fight a lion and a bear. First Samuel 17.34, he told Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. When a lion came and a bear came and a lamb out of the flock, then verse 35, I went after him. This time he did not use a stone. You know, with Goliath, we really can't. You know, he's physically big. So God gives him a different strategy to bring the Goliath. But in this case, he says, I went after the lion, smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Which means he actually wrestled with the lion. He caught hold of the lion, you know, the, and took that sheep or the, the young sheep, the lamb, from the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. God wants us to be wrestlers. Amen. And when you wrestle, most of the time, you'll be alone. Even your wife, your husband, your spouse may not be there because God wants you to wrestle. You will come out stronger. You'll be alone, but you'll be stronger. But actually, being alone is good in that case because you know for sure, 100%, that you'll come out as a different woman, different man. You will, you'll be able to stand alone as a leader. Leadership is developed when you're alone. Integrity is developed or monitored or... Um, it is actually tested when we are alone. Hallelujah. So David caught that lion alone. Wrestled with that lion and the bear alone. And today that was the one that gave him confidence. I knew how to fight. I know how to wrestle. Me and God against the lion. So once you tear a few lions alone, you can tear a big group alone. Hallelujah. Number three, when you wrestle, persist in prayer. A Christian, we cannot win the war without prayer. First Samuel 1 Samuel 1.6 says, Her adversary, Hannah and Penina, in the same house, two women, Hannah was mocked because she had no child, and her adversary provoked Hannah to make her fret because the Lord has shut her womb. First Samuel 1 verse 6. And year after year, verse 7, when she went to the house of the Lord, she provoked her. You know, somebody is provoking you. Somebody is mocking you. She wept. She did not eat. So persist in prayer. You know, sometimes we... Christians also react like unbelievers. God does not want us to react like unbelievers. If somebody scolds you, you don't need to scold them back. Somebody in the office takes your project, you don't need to fight for it. In fact, you tell them, please take it. Because that I used to do when I was in Hewlett Packard. They said, we're going to offshore this project. I said, okay, let it go. And then what will you do? No problem. Then immediately after that, they put me in a new department with a new technology and everything. So we learned something about Windows. So far, I was doing something in Unix. So I realized in those days <clears throat> that if you hold on to something and trusting in that, we'll never grow past it. But if somebody is wanting to take it, you let it go. And then you get a bigger one, nicer one. And that's 
God working. God will make sure that you always have the big project, nice project. So do not fight for projects. When somebody wants to take it, you say, whatever the management decide, we have, I'm fine with it. I'm not, I'm not attached to it. I'm here to do whatever they have for me to do. So your peace should never go away. If somebody claims your honor, or you did some great work and somebody's trying to take part of it, let it go, let it go. If they want to take something, let it go. Hallelujah. And one day at the right time, God will promote you or even take you to another place. We really don't have to fight. So Hannah was persisting in prayer. Instead of fighting this lady, hey, why are you mocking me? I'm going to you know, complain. I'm going to do this. I'm going to tear you apart. You know, that's what people in, in immediately react. But Hannah said, no, no, no. I'm not going to react to this lady. I'm going to persist in prayer. So she did not stop going to church. She went to the temple in verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul, prayed unto the Lord and cried. Prayer is also a form of wrestling. And then one day the priest saw her, verse 17, and then God of Israel, the priest said, Go in peace, the God of Israel has heard your petition. And God will answer you, God will magnify you, God will you know, make sure your prayer is granted. She overcame barrenness. Verse 20, it came to pass. Hannah conceived and bore a son and called him Samuel. You know, we need to just persist in prayer. Wrestle with God in prayer. Instead of wasting time on television or even arguing with people. Because most of the time I see in the corporate world, getting emotionally involved in work is not a good way to work. Because when we're emotionally involved and when there is always a competition to, to override someone or to beat someone or prove that, you know, mine is better than his or his is better than mine. If somebody is trying to prove that he is better than you and if we get into that emotional aspect of work or emotionally losing our peace and then get, getting up next day and say, today I'm going to make sure that he knows he gets a lesson or today I'll make sure that he is false or she is false. You know, when we get up in the morning and there's something taking our mind, which means we have given our heart and emotions to activities at work. So God stripped me of that and not to emotionally attach myself to any person's words or actions. Be like a lamb, be like a bird or a pigeon, harmless as doves. Just contribute your best and do your best, but do not carry emotional hurts or feelings. Let nothing take your peace at work. You know, when the devil gets hold of us in that area, then it will take our life. You know, it'll, we'll come home, we'll be thinking about it. When we get up in the morning, we'll be thinking about it. And then week after day, day after day, we'll be thinking about it. But when you come to church, when you go home, you should be completely detached. And say, I'm going to spend time with God. I'm going to spend time with my family. And completely trusting God for all solutions. Amen. You don't need to prove every day to be at work or to be that you are smart. God will fight for you. And so she gives birth to Samuel. Samuel becomes the first full-time Nazarite prophet in the history of Israel. And Hannah has five more children. And then she says immediately, 1 Samuel 2, verse 1, Hannah prayed and said, My heart Rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. I rejoice. So never compete individually. 
We did not come here to compete all the while. We've been taught like that. Oh, life means competition, competition. You need to compete. You know, we, we were taught to compete in school. Then we taught to compete in the 10th grade. Then we thought, oh, we need to compete to get into engineering and medicine. All the while we were taught to compete. And somebody said, some weird person, you know, it's a survival of the fittest. Maybe some evolutionist said that. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> So our whole mind is, you know, when I go to work, I need to compete. No, no, no. You don't need to compete. Do your best. That's all is needed. You'll always be demand. You'll always be in high demand. You'll always be, you know, looked forward when you give your best and God, you know, gives you that talent. You'll never have the lack of job. You're not there to compete. You're there to bless them with your excellence. Bless them with your product, your ideas. You're there to bless them. You're not there to compete. Because when you compete, actually your efficiency goes down. Because you're always thinking about competition instead of actually delivering products or services. That's why the companies that compete, they may never come up with new evolutionary product. But there may be a small company that, uh, that probably comes up with new, new products. Those who are competing, they are saturated. Hallelujah. God wants you to trust him. Pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will praise him. And to wrestle with God, engage in spiritual warfare. No, this is our real warfare, not human beings. Ephesians 6 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, when we really understand spiritual warfare, then we'll do the real wrestling. Amen? Your enemy is not the one who sits close to you. There's a spiritual enemy. There are demonic forces that fight against us. So Paul understood. He said, love everybody. Be kind. Be fervent. You know, love one another with a holy kiss. Greet one another. Care for one another. Husbands, love your wife. And wife, uh, respect. Be subject to your husbands. So all of these, if you see, God, Paul's letters are very, you know, it's, 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 it's love in action. He doesn't embody himself as a rude soldier, as he once was. Now he's like, you know, be kind, be gentle. Love is the greatest gift. You know, sing to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You know, be kind to one another. But, he said, we wrestle against principalities. You are a warrior, but against, you are wrestling against these principalities and powers of darkness. Which means we wrestle, really we are in, in a warfare. And we are, we are soldiers. And so verse 13, he said, take up the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand the evil day. So if somebody does evil to you, you know it's a spirit behind it. If somebody is taking from you, there is a spirit behind it. If somebody scolds you for no reason, there is a spirit behind it. If a spouse all of a sudden you know, is upset, there is a spirit behind it. So, take up that armor of God and wrestle against the real enemy, against the powers of darkness, against the wicked hosts in heavenly places. Because there is a real dragon, there is a real Satan, there is a real accuser of the brethren. The one who was cast down from heaven, cut to the ground. Dragon was cast to the ground and he's now, 
in Revelations 12, 17, the dragon was very angry with the women and then dragon went out to make war with the remnant of a seed. We are the remnant and we keep the commandments of our God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So Satan is not happy when you are happy. Satan is not happy when you are praying. Satan is not happy when you come to church. Satan is not happy when you are healthy. He wants you to be sick. So when, you, when sickness comes, we actually is a warfare. It's a spiritual warfare. Do not accept that sickness as it comes from God. That's the worst thing that can happen is to say, God, you, you sent me that sickness. No, you, you're punishing me. That's what Satan wants you to accept. Satan wants you to put the blame on God. But God wants you to fight against that sickness. Fight against that spirit that brings sickness. God never sends sickness for the pleasure of sickness. Yes, there were times in the Old Testament God would send for correction. But he always, in Jesus' time, if you see, the heart of God was always to heal the sick. He came to heal the sick and deliver the oppressed, raise the dead. How can that same God send sickness? So we need to partner with God and say, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind this Satan. I bind this sickness. This will not touch my child. This will not take my, my spouse. This will not take my family member. No, yes, they, if they, even if there has been generational patterns, you can say this stops here. That generational pattern does not continue. I take the word of God by faith and apply it. In verse in Revelation 12, 10, it says, the Bible says, heard a loud noise and sound that said, salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of Christ and the accuser of the brethren is cast down and the accuser as, who has been accusing day and night and verse 11 says, they overcame, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of of their testimony. What we speak is what will come out. Amen. If the doctor, if doctor gives you a report, you can always say, I don't accept it. I reject it. Reject that report. According to scripture, I will live. Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. Jesus was not sick even for a day. Amen. And Jesus said, John 10, I'll, the devil will come, steal and destroy, but I came to give life and life abundant. So I take this report. I will accept the report of God, but I will reject. Science will say what it is, but faith will rise above science and turn it. For example, the Red Sea, science says water cannot be split. The sea can never be made dry. I mean, without any chemical reactions, you cannot just speak to it, it will divide. No, no, no. Science will say it, will, it is impossible. But faith made that water divide. Without human intervention, no chemicals introduced or chemical reactions were introduced. The water split just by stretching the rod. God sent the east wind all night, made the Red Sea a dry ground. It was not even wobbly. It was dry ground. People walked on dry ground. And that's faith. That's not science. Faith supersedes science. So when the doctor gives scientific report, we don't need to get angry with him. Yeah, I understand what science says. But my faith is about that science. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a God who is superior. He's beyond medical report or scientific facts. I have a God who can move mountains with one word. God who can raise the dead with one word. Lazarus come out. It's beyond science. We understand science. We're not against science. We're not against medicine. We're not against engineering. We understand all of it. In fact, God made all of them. But when it comes to God, there is an element of faith that will rise above science, in fact, change scientific facts. For example, Joshua said, I don't have enough time today, God, 
to kill these five kings that came against me. Why don't you stop the moon? In the name of Jesus, he said, God, stop the moon and stop the sun. That day, science came to a froze. By faith, one man was able to stop the sun for a whole day until he can kill all his enemies. He said, I just need more time to do more wrestling and killing. And Lord, I command it to stop. And God, that was one day in history when God stopped even that universe. The entire system he put in place, he paused it so he can, my son can finish his job. That's when faith overruled science and stopped it. So faith is not always in, you know, we don't need to always fight with scientists. We agree with scientists. What they say is right, yes. Scientifically what they say is right. But by faith, I'm praying that cancer will disappear. Hallelujah. Amen. Any sickness, by the blood of Jesus, by his stripes, we will be healed. In a day, you're going to walk and leap and jump. In an hour, you know, Paul was preaching till midnight and that one young man was sleeping upstairs and then he fell down. Imagine he was preaching all night, all night. And that young man, you know, Paul was a highly theological preacher. So maybe he thought these concepts are too deep. And then he fell into a sleep and fell from the, from the upper room. And Paul says, okay, let me just go and pray. He prayed and came back, preached again, continued the next day. That young man came back alive. The dead came back alive. Hallelujah. So let's not get angry with signs and medicine reports. Let them be there. But you say, I am a child of the covenant. I am not limited by science. I will rise above science in faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. We're going to pray. Wrestling alone with God. As you wrestle with God, God will change our identity. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says Jacob wrestled alone. And one night was able to change him from being a deceiver and a supplanter to becoming the prince. Just lift your hand and ask God, is all God wants is one night. It all takes one night of wrestling. Just lift your hand and ask God, God change me quickly. Lord, change my identity quickly. Lord, give me more time to wrestle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we will not leave until you bless us. Until you change our mindset. Until you change our patterns of thinking. And remove the negative patterns of thinking. Those that have been plaguing my life for several years. Those that have taken my life for several years. Thoughts of defeat. Thoughts of uh, uh, you know, doubt, thoughts of failure, those that have been planted by my uncircumcised Philistines, the fears that were put into my heart, those things that competitive spirit that the world has put into my heart. Lord, I remove every spirit that has been, every spirit that has been sp Speaking to us, the demonic spirit, I pray God, those all these insinuations and suggestions of the evil one, I cancel them by the fire of God. I take every word of God and put it into my heart. I thank you, Jesus. I will trust in your word alone. Lord, I will trust only your word. Not the words of my co-worker. Not the words of my teachers who said evolution is the way to go. Survival is the way to go. You need to fight every day. Lord, I pray, change my mind. Change my identity. Hikaraba deliri shikaraba. Is there not a cause? I pray God will give you a cause. God will give you a dream. God will give you a purpose for your existence. We did not come without a purpose. But the devil has been trying to steal it. But in wrestling, you will identify 
the cause. You will identify your destiny. You will know you are a prince. God will reveal that you are a queen for a certain season or generation or people or tribe or nation. Because God sent you for that season, this generation. And there is a generation that is awaiting to hear your voice. Just receive that word. There is a generation that is waiting to hear your voice. And this is the generation. And God said, I sent you to this generation. And God says, you are a mighty man, a woman of valor. In wrestling, God revealed identity. Lord, reveal your identity. Reveal our identity, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Who am I? What will I do? Tell me which giant should come down. Thank you, Jesus. Tell me the land that needs to be conquered. As God told Jacob, this land I've given to your descendants. You will dwell. And he came to Bethel, reestablished his covenant, offered sacrifices to God, and dwelt in that place. Hallelujah. May God establish you at the right place, in the right company. May your talents flourish. May people look for you. May you be a man of solutions. Just like Pharaoh was looking for a man of solutions. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hand and ask God for their solutions. God will give you solutions. God will give you that problem-solving skills. Strategies to solve great problems. Hallelujah. That will have large impact. Thank you, Jesus. Divine solutions. Spirit-led solutions. You will never have competition in your life. You'll be always high demand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Overcome upon Lord, in the Vartala or Sagar Valley, Ella Master with him as they go to work, they will know that they are covenant children. Lord, they have an identity. There has been change or in changing process every day as we wrestle with you. Lord, they are not alone. God is with them. Lord, until you send them and bless them. Lord, send them every day and bless them. No giant will touch them this week. I pray no Goliath can overtake them because the God of Israel, in the name of the God of Israel, they will always win. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray they will take up the whole armor of God and put on that helmet of salvation, put on the breastplate of righteousness, take up the sword, sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and take up the belt of truth and also their feet furnished with the gospel of the preparation of the gospel of peace. I thank you, God, they'll take up everything and the, and the shield of faith and Lord with which they can quench every fiery dart of the evil one. Give them victory. Not to my way, Katrai Sutri. Cut the say the Sagal and Megali Marwadi.
Amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap. Thank you for coming. Have a great week. God bless you. Praise the Lord.